got up, folks. So here we are. This is something to keep an eye out. I don't know if you can quite see this here. But we've got a couple of widening in the shallows here. It's important to keep them well back of the shallows, the shadows. There's a couple of darker shadows in there close. It's a bit hard to see in the video. I don't want to go in there too close to spook them. But there's just the dark shapes. And the water's moving out. And that's how shallow the water is now. Our wormy bag has attracted them in here. Attracted them into this shallow water. So that's something to keep an eye out, those dark shadows. So you're not really spotting the fish you see in the dark shadow for the widening in the water. Let's get the rod right out there. So folks, here's some examples of what you're looking for in the shallows. So we've seen some widening crews around here earlier. Is lots of these little melon holes. Now it's a bit hard to see now with this wash over it. When that clears, lots of little melon holes where the whiting can come and forage and I also think that our stink bag the worming is is encouraging not a distinct gutter but lots of little melon holes in these shallows that the whiting accrue now another thing I like to do is a bit of burly at the beach particularly trying to hold fish in the in the gutter or in close to the shore where you are here just using a bit of uh, you know, pre-processed burley with um, aniseed oil but also some broken dead bits of worm that helps keep the fish where you are or feeding actively you don't want to overfeed them or burley when there's too much sweep or it'll take the fish away from you so let's get that frog back in so what the line back in. on again on up. Just walking down so I can bring the rod to the action. This beautiful whippy rod. Nice and close to shore. Wait for a bit of water to wash him up. And wait for that wave there. Okay, we only got light six pound litre. Just use the pressure of that wave to wash it up and the bend in the rod. This fish might, yeah, it'll just be legal. Only three here in Queensland, yeah, he's just about 24. 24. 24. Good stuff. So what are we using here? So today we've got from Drew's uh, Gardener's Rainbow Beach Tackle Shop. He has a beautiful supply of both beach and blood worms. So we give them the blood worms that run out here and they, believe it or not, work just as well if not better on the beach to beach worms. And just got that long trace of about a metre or so up to the first swivel and then with the albi you want to run a swivel on the top part of your rig so then that sinker is running between those two swivels they've got a soft bead to cushion the knot when you cast in there so so that's the rig and we're just fishing this shallow drain along the shoreline here now fishing this a bit differently because casting and retrieving from the outside bank but there aren't a lot of fish. Sometimes we're just either leaving it right at that edge of that back bank or bringing it into the middle of the gutter and just let it sit there and wait for the fish. So sometimes you need to vary, vary your action to find the fish. So let's get it back out there. Jeez. So when the fish are in so close here, firstly you don't want to be close to the edge yourself or you'll spook the fish. It's just a simple case of Come on the reel of the albi like that to hold the line over the shoulder. It's just a gentle lob. Just a gentle lob out there into that gutter. And then I'm just retrieving it in a little bit because they're sitting in closer. 
sitting in closer to that edge and we'll just let that sit there wait for the fish to bite wind backwards on the albi and that's a big that's a big advantage of the albi you can wind backwards let the fish take it and then just turn wind and strike and this is the advantage of fishing at low tide like this you're not getting much water movement um, at least in terms of washing right up the beach and the whiting don't like that sand in their gills or washed around too much low tide generally find the beach about an hour before to an hour after the low tide it's really peak time and we're right on the low at the moment so another whiting here we're on the on Tiwa beach here with Matt from uh, MJF Rods he's been pulling in a few whiting all this little gutter that's running close to shore here this uh, fish I don't know might be 25 or so yeah the woods are low tide about an hour and a half or so before dropping just drain that's run along the beach here drops down to an end right down the end but just standing well back from the shore and casting into this shallow drain jeez well again as you can see we're reasonable way back from the edge this all the way back from the edge and there's another the just legal whiting we'll measure him up but yeah in this nice little shallow gutter with um Matt and yeah get a couple of fish jeez so here we go in this little shallow gutter here Matt from MJ F fishing rods has got another one well done Matt now, what rod are you using today, mate? Um, Skip, this one's a, a 3126 yeah. uh, Snyderglass bent tip. Okay. So it's got the bend in the rod up the top there. So, there you go. So, folks, tell us tell us a bit about why you use the um, the bent rod, mate. The uh, tip. It just stops line twists, mate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so just, uh, just um, doesn't wrap around the tip of your, your rod. Okay. Uh, the line's always constantly down, so... Um, yeah, it just seems to take that twist out and Excellent. make it a bit more easier. Now, mate, your rods are particularly light and all. They want to quickly talk us through how you get them so light. So, MJF don't use, we don't use any grips on ours. Um, mm -hmm. We do have a grip on this one, but this is a heat shrunk grip. Yep. This just uh, heats up and just binds onto the uh, blank. But uh, as for our other rods, they usually are just with, um, just straight out onto the glass yep. with the real seat binded on there. And uh, that's just what makes it so light there. You know, we go clip-on real seat. Um, we do the clip-ons, we do the uh, wind-ons as well. And so it just takes that denseness out of the rod with the grips. Yes, so, so, I know. After putting that on mine, I really noticed a difference, yeah. mate. And, of course, the beautiful colours in the rod. Yeah. So, beautiful, beautiful rod. So, I, I can't recommend them enough. Well, let's get back to the fish, mate. Get you up to. And we're on again. The shallow, little shallow gutter. So we'll wait for this wave to come. See the fish in the waves there. Just hold the line with him. Uh, he's not too, not real big, so bring him up. Yeah, and he's probably just legal. And we're on again. See there. Just how close these fish are for sure he's got a couple of mates here with him there you can see you might be able to see in the water there these mates bring him up the wave and here we have another legal fish right in the probably ankle to the deepest below knee deep good stuff 